My name is Jared Bregas. I am the island manager for tropical shipping in St. Lucia and I am also the inter-island business development manager for tropical shipping. We tend to put uh, disasters into one little box, hurricanes and storms. And we do have vulnerabilities in this area, which we went in, in this region, which we went through this morning, that extend well beyond hurricanes and storms. But we also live in an earthquake zone, and we're on a volcanic island, and Kikam Jenny just started acting up yesterday. So these things are very real threats, tsunamis. So we, we, we have to put disaster recovery in the context of all the vulnerabilities that we face, all of the risks that we face, and prioritize those. As a, as a nation, we have, to, we have to realize that it is not just the government, it is the government and the private sector that must collaborate and have a joint coordinated response to these disasters. All right, Rick Morell, CEO, Tropical Shipping. I mean, basically what we're trying to do today is to bring together the public and the private sector to basically meet with one another, build relationships, so that if ever another disaster ever happens in St. Lucia, the recovery for the people of St. Lucia can be quick, prompt, with minimal suffering. During a time of a disaster, there's a lot of chaos, a lot of disruption of communication. So having the relationships established well in advance, as long with the processes, basically enables the recovery to be done expeditiously, as opposed to going through a terminable lot of time with bad decisions made, poor inputs, and the end result being a lot of people suffering. But the important activity is not what takes place today, it's just the learning from today and then the leadership that everybody leaves with to basically help lead their community to a better future for the recovery in of any future disaster. I think the single most important thing is leadership by everybody, coupled with an understanding that the most important asset for every organization, every department of government, is the families of the employees because if you don't find a way to take care of the families, then you won't have an employee. My name is Roy Watlington. I'm a retired professor of physics and physical oceanography from the University of the Virgin Islands. What, what I'd like people to do is to take a multi-hazard approach, and I think that's the theme that uh, the, part, the participants and presenters are trying to push, because you know any one particular hazard, like a tsunami or a, volcanic, uh, a volcano coming to life, may be a very, very rare, Thing, but the preparations for many of the hazards is pretty much the same. How you use your land, where you put your infrastructure, where you put your schools and the hospitals, how you allow your natural resources that can protect the coast, like mangrove forests and reefs and seagrass beds. Uh, uh, so how those things protect. In, in so many of these different hazards, the same preventative ma measures can make, for, make greater preparedness and, 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 and safety. And so a multi-hazard approach with a long-range view is very useful. Uh, climate change it, uh, has the potential for uh, exacerbating some of the negative effects. We know that the, the private sector has uh, resources that they can leverage, both in terms of information that they could give, but in terms of, of access to communities, um, access to individuals, and we want to ensure that we have that sort of strengthened collaboration that we can spread the message of disaster preparedness and encourage the entire nation with the same message that we all need to be prepared to do with the impact of hazards. Communication and power networks, banks, grocery stores, pharmacies, and healthcare providers are just some of the businesses essential to any community. The faster these businesses recover, the faster the community can respond and rebuild following a catastrophe.